So in 2012, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, stage four. Um, it was an aggressive form, um, so I started chemotherapy immediately. I would spend a week or two in the hospital, come home for a couple weeks, go back into the hospital. So we conquered that, and um, I then had my spleen removed. Um, there was some noticeable um, irregularities about it. The next fall, um, I was diagnosed with stage three neck and throat cancer, out of the blue, um, not related, which I have a hard time wondering. So um, inserted a feeding tube, had chemotherapy again, and uh, radiation. So um, that was two years ago. So ever since then, I feel good. I've had clean scans, and I'm feeling really positive about the days ahead. When I was first sick and healing, um, Dr. Chris Vandenberg approached me and said he was going to start a uh, oncology rehabilitation department at Mary Freebed. I was so excited. He asked if um, you know I would be a part of some of the, the research and um, they questioned patients what would have been helpful for you. Um, it was helpful to me to be able to talk about it with other cancer patients and talk to rehabilitation doctors and get their input about side effects from chemo such as neuropathy. Mary Freebed is, is, is fabulous and I, it was there for me. As I got stronger, I thought, well, I, I should have a goal because it will really give me a reason to work out harder. I have always been fascinated with Mount Everest and the history, um, the, the climbers. I've read every book, watched every movie. I started going to the Mary Freebed Y, which has a special place in my heart. And just to get stronger, I started working out with a trainer there. Put on my hiking boots, so I sort of look you know, sort of stupid because I've got my hiking boots on in Michigan in the gym. But I put on my hiking boots and I get on a machine that is not a Stairmaster, but it's almost like an escalator. And then I'll do uh, a lot of weights and balance with Amanda. Good. That's 12. How are you feeling? Good. 13, lower back okay? Yep. 15. Halfway, come on. 15. I found uh, a trek that um, takes you to the base camp of Mount Everest. It's the same path that all of these historical climbers have taken, and it's a place where all of the professional climbers and these historians have slept before they actually um, attempt to climb the mountain. So I'm going to Mount Everest base camp. Yay! You gotta get used to that feeling and how to control and re-get your breathing back, because that's what you're gonna feel as you go up. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I I if could I could go. <laughs> I wish I could bring Amanda with me. She has really, really um, helped me out of the ditch. And yeah, I'm it's very, very grateful. Oh, it's <laughs> It doesn't have to be a trek to Mount Everest. It can be going apple picking. It can be baking brownies for your neighbor. It can be saying hello to the lady in the grocery store and calling her by name. A lot of us live, but we don't feel alive. And my goal every day is to feel alive. What can I do today to really feel alive? Because none of us have a guarantee for tomorrow. And, you know, I just think that we don't need to let time go by. And I feel great. I feel the best I've felt in four years. I feel strong. And I'm just really grateful for every single day. 